This is a demonstration of the RMM feature of the Gen 4S hardware. In this scenario, we're connecting to a system via the RMM port. And so we're going to have to change our local IP address in order to do that. So we'll select an IP address in the same subnet as the RMM port default. Standard submask. We do not need a gateway, so we can just go ahead and click OK. Now we'll connect to the default IP address of the RMM port. Log in with root and Calvin. For this part of the demonstration, we'll immediately open the remote console by clicking on the remote control button here and the launch console button here. At first, it'll prompt you to launch a uh, Java file, and we'll just go ahead and click on open. And that'll bring you immediately to the console. For the next part of the demonstration, we'll configure shared RMM access on the ETH0 port. So we'll start by running the following command. The command is IPMI tool. We are configuring the LAN. And we're setting the properties for channel 1, which is the channel shared by ETH0. And in this case, we're setting our IP address to match our external subnet. Next, we'll set the net mask. And then finally, the gateway. These changes will take effect immediately, so we can go back to the browser. We can connect to the new IP address of 10.241.238.108. Before we attempt to connect to the new IP address, why don't we run an IPMI tool command which will show us the settings for channel 1. And we can see that the IP address, NetMask, and Gateway have all been uh, established. We'll connect to that IP address, log on with the same credentials, and now we'll demonstrate some of the other capabilities. We'll start by clicking on Configuration. There is the ability to configure uh, IP address information here, though the recommendation is to use IPMI tool. There's some other options here as well, but we're going to bypass those for now because those would not be part of the general use of this console. Click on the remote control tab not only gives you the ability to launch the console, but also provides a virtual front panel which shows you the current status, plus has a power and reset button. You also have the server power control above here. And here you can see the reset server option. You can choose to force it to go into BIO setup. You can power off, perform a graceful shutdown, or uh, power cycle the server. As you can see, power on is grayed out because it is currently powered on. Next, we'll go back to console redirection for the final part of this demonstration. We'll launch the console. And now we are going to do a re-kickstart procedure. First, we're going to mount a local ISO. That is an ISO on the system that is launching this console. We click on Device, Redirect ISO, and then browse to the local folder that contains the ISO. So here we're in the folder. We'll select the official Avamar Kickstart for SUSE for Service Pack 1 because that supports the Gen 4S hardware. And then now we'll reboot the system. As you boot the system, you'll notice a few stops and starts along the way. But you will not need to press any buttons to continue with the boot process. At this point, however, if you were going to do some troubleshooting or configuring of the RAID BIOS, during this part of the boot, you could press Control-G and enter that console. We're not going to do that for this demonstration.
Okay, it appears to have launched the Kickstart ISO. And now here on the opening screen, we can see all of the different options that are available. And that ends our demonstration. Thank you.